So, I've kind of danced around it outside of a few lines in the past few episodes, but we're sort of in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Every person in every country is adjusting to a new normal. Back in April, to celebrate our fifth wedding anniversary, me and the ever faithful Liz, aka Camera Lady, have planned the trip to Washington DC to do one of our favorite activities, visit museums. Well, the Rona had other plans. We're just two people of millions stuck indoors right now, unable to go much of anywhere or do much of anything. Well, I mean, we could go to Walmart and, you know, fight Karen for the last gallon of milk. Or instead of doing that, what we're going to do today is check out and review some virtual tours from various museums around the world. To start off, why not a virtual trip around the Natural History Museum in DC? This is just one of many Smithsonian's with tours like this, but since me and the wife are a wee bit into fossils, it's quite close to our hearts. What's cool here is that you can choose pretty much every exhibit, both past and present, and, well, wander around the museum like a typical visitor. The image quality is nice and vibrant, but it's imperfect. For a start, there's only one angle for every display, meaning that certain things are in perfect view and easy readable, but others are obscured by other objects or just far away enough to not be readable. I just want to read about the end result of mass extinction events, gosh darn it. On the plus side, navigation is intuitive and you do get a little map in the top right with preset waypoints for each exhibit, making getting around a breeze. However, the real highlights are the narrated video tours. One of the many scientists or students of the facility take a certain exhibit or item and tell you the full story. It's really good stuff and I can't recommend it more. Next on our list of places to visit, we are going international. Specifically, we are going to Vatican City. Of course, I do have to mention that there is a religious element with this one, being that it is the home of the Catholic faith. However, I would argue you don't have to hold any form of belief to appreciate fine art. And fine art is, of course, the order of the day here. I have to give it a hand. The work this time around is impeccable. It's in much smaller spaces, but there's a variety of tours to choose from, and all of them have tons of camera angles to get a good look at the display pieces. Of course, there's a tour of the Sistine Chapel, which I thoroughly recommend, with three rather good gigabit sized images of the ceiling. My favorite overall though is the tour of Raphael's rooms. This arguably translates the best, since these are all square spaces, and, naturally, I found myself moving my mouse around the same way I turned my head. There's even a VR mode, but I don't own a headset, so I can't really demo this for you. I did note, though, that this one had a bit more loading to do than the Smithsonian, but I suspect it's because of the absolutely staggering sizes of the images at hand. Staying in Europe, we're going to trek north now, through Switzerland, ultimately to France, specifically to the capital Paris, for a very short but macabre visit. I of course refer to the Catacombs of Paris, a series of ossuaries that hold the remains of 6 million people. This one is quite brief, with only a handful of scenes, but it does get the job done. It starts with a few basic looks at the limestone that lies underneath Paris, but quickly gets into the work of 1774. Built at the Cimetière de saint innocent basement quite literally collapsed due to the city's graveyard being full to bursting, around 6 million people's remains had to be moved into this network. It's a fascinating topic that I do suggest reading deeper into, but to get you started, a tour ending with a sepulchral lamp should be more than enough. Also, I got stuck here for a second trying to translate this in my head before I gave up and just looked at Google. It says, roughly, dispose of your possessions because you will die and you cannot always live. Finally, it's time to venture to Amsterdam to the Van Gogh Museum. 
The Van Gogh Museum tour is a little different from the rest. For a start, it's a Google Street View affair, so there are tons and tons of angles to see the vast collection of art from. This place is absolutely packed with not only works by the titular Vincent van Gogh, but also with pieces from his personal collection, most notably his Japanese selection and of course his artistry inspired by that. Naturally, it's mostly his still life projects and of course a whole wing dedicated to self portraits and the museum does a good job chronologically sorting through van Gogh's life focusing mainly on his final two most active years. Sadly, Google's very well-meaning and good attempt is just that, an attempt. The image quality is a bit questionable and certain scenes have very obviously been stitched together poorly. Plus, on the third floor, this whole section here is blurred. Why? It looks like it's just a giant painting. At least the navigation is fairly straightforward, and on certain curated pieces, you can get a highlighted guide to that artwork, with a detailed history of the artwork and a much higher quality scan to gaze upon. What's notable is that this is apparently a 2020 project, which may explain why only a few pieces get highlighted and why the third floor is incomplete. Either way, just like the others, it's a great way to pass the time in quarantine, or decompress from a day of what I can only imagine right now to be a hellscape at work. Hopefully, sooner rather than later, we'll be able to go without a virtual tour. We'll be able to go, recline, and take in the majesty of what's in front of us. Until then, stay safe, and stay sane. Thank you.